Hello internet, welcome back to our oops. Hello internet, welcome back to our tutorial playthrough. Sorry about that, showed you my OBS a little bit. Um, this episode we're going to be looting our first house. In the last episode we engaged in our first combat encounter. And uh, I think it's safe to loot this house. Usually when you're trying to, in a very early game, you're trying to find a place to loot, the outskirts of town are by far the safest place to be. If you were going to set up a base in this town, either this house or this house would be optimal. If we really wanted to, we could head all the way over here um, just to get access to a larger portion of the town. We can assume that the town probably continues at least somewhat in this direction. So it will put us in a better place because currently we have to backtrack all the way over here. Anytime we go out to loot, let's say we go out to this hardware store, we loot it, we have to walk all the way back here, which can be pretty tedious, but it's not such a big deal. When I was first learning to do Cataclysm, I made long trips all the time. Now, I, I don't really do that. If I have to walk across town, I really want to have a vehicle with me. I really want to have something where I can cart back all that stuff because hoofing it over and over back and forth gets real boring. But again, when I started playing, it didn't really bother me. I felt like that was a, a key part of the game. So, And we know that this prison is not somewhere we want to be, but we also know that it has a big exterior wall and some fencing, and so we're probably not going to get enemies coming through here because they'd have to go through concrete followed by a fence, followed by a barbed wire fence, all the way out to get us, very unlikely. So this is a pretty safe location to be in. Our evac shelter is in a pretty great spot um, from a protection standpoint. We did see some survivor zombies up in this area. We're gonna try to avoid them as best we can. For now, we're just going to explore this first house. Now, we've gathered supplies previously from the shelter. We're gonna do that again here. You'll see as we try to move into the door, it's locked. We're going to need to use our lock picks. We can do this by examining the door. Um, depending on the door that you're interacting with, it may or may not automatically use your lock picks. The way Cataclysm is set up, a door can only have one action attached to it. Most of the doors, like this particular door, is pry bar only. So if we had a crowbar um, that was an appropriate quality, we could pry this just by examining it. You'll see down here it prompts us about needing something to pry with. That means it will not auto use the lock picks because it will auto use the, the crowbar instead. So what we would have to do is go into our inventory, activate our lock picks, and then select the door. And we would have to do this repeatedly until we were able to open the door. Um, and it will take some time, especially at low skill levels. This is something that uses and trains our mechanics. So you'll see we're at 3% of the way to mechanics one. We're gaining experience because lock picking uses the mechanics and it's based on our mechanics. So our mechanics of zero means we're not doing very well. Something else I just noticed, our stick is halfway damaged already, the spike, the spear that we made. So I'm gonna go ahead and swap to the cudgel because I think it will be better for us. Obviously making reach weapons has a lot of benefit, but having the cudgel, I just would rather have the cudgel, honestly. I don't like using spears very much. Although again, as a new player, I highly recommend you use spears. They're just better for your character. They protect you from damage. Um, and anything that protects you from damage, that means it protects your clothing's health. It protects your actual HP. So you use less resources to heal over time, whatever. Once you've played the game, you can go ahead and lean on blunt weapons and, and cutting weapons instead of spears. But that is a personal preference thing. People, a lot of people use spears I kind of hate them because they're like the meta game and I don't like being meta, I like being a contrarian. So we're trying to lockpick this door. We don't really need to. Um, there's a door, there's a window at the front of this building that's open as well as at the rear. So we can enter either way without any concern. And additionally, we could always go low tech and smash the windows. Now, if you smash the window, you'll see this has a broken glass in the frame. You need to smash again to clear out that broken glass because if you move into it, it will damage you. Now, it will prompt you if we go to step into it. It will say, Do you, are you sure you want to step into it? So just make sure you don't step into the glass. Smashing makes noise. So if there were zombies nearby, they would have heard that. Because we've already cleared the area, I know I can just safely smash the windows. Additionally, if we were trying to use this as a base, we would not want to smash the windows because we want them to be intact so that we can close them up, shut the curtains, and be in darkness. Now that is something that you're going to want to do a lot of the time. Um, just because we know that this area is clear, we don't need to worry about that too much. 
but let's say we were going into this house over here we don't really know what's behind this house so when we move into it we would want to be real careful about moving past open windows so let's say these windows are open we could go right to the the books here but that then exposes us to everything on the street you can see this lit up area here is our field of vision there could be enemies right here that would spot us so instead of doing that we would creep up close to them staying close to the wall to minimize the angle that they can see us at and we would want to use the close key the lowercase c and close these windows the curtains on the windows so that they cannot see and now we can safely come over here and loot so anytime you're progressing in a building and you don't really know what's outside be very careful, peek if you need to peek, um, and just carefully approach the window and close it. You will open the window. Uh, if the window is open, you need to close it twice. You will close it and then you will close the curtain as well. Oh, there's no curtain on this window. That's extremely peculiar. Uh, window without curtains, window with closed curtains. Extremely odd that they would have a open window and a window with curtains. So I have no idea. Oh, it's it's because it's spawned open. Right. So you can't spawn a window with open and have curtains on it. If it has curtains, it will automatically be closed. Um, or rather, it will be open, but the window itself will not be open. Um, so that's why this window has no, no curtains on it. Although, wasn't this window also open? And it had curtains. I don't know why it didn't have curtains. It's weird that it doesn't have curtains. But you probably don't care about that because that's a map gen thing. Anyway, we've gotten into the house. What are we really looking for? Well, I mean, it, because it's the early game, we need everything. We're looking for books that will raise our skills. Uh, we're looking for food, preferably perishable food uh, or non It doesn't really matter. Any kind of food. We're looking for any kind of tool. We're looking for knives so that we can upgrade to a proper knife spear. We're looking for crafting materials. We're looking for better clothing. We're looking for beverages. We're looking for everything that we could possibly find. Usually, when I enter a house, one of my first stops is the kitchen. Because, usually when I'm looting houses, I'm looking for food. Now, kitchens were reorganized recently. So, many, many items now appear in the kitchen. It will just depend on what kind of house map gen you get. They fixed most of them. So most of them will have a lot of stuff in them. And it's sorted by category. So this sink, for instance, is going to contain stuff you would expect to find in a sink. Here we have detergent, ammonia, a couple towels, a scrub brush, and a rag. Makes perfect sense that those things would appear in a sink. Similarly, if we look at the oven, you will find oven-related items. Here we have a small fire extinguisher. Oftentimes you will find pots and pans on the, on the stove. Uh, here's another sink, although this one... Oh, it's a dishwasher. Ah, so it has a lot of dishes in it. Specifically, a value here, we want a steak knife. Because if we look in our uh, crafting menu for spears, you will see that the knife spears require a proper knife. And one of the knives that we can use... Oh, it's not a steak knife? Uh, it does not use a steak knife. My mistake. So we don't want the steak knife, really. Uh, we would want nothing here. Um, similarly, cabinets have been organized to where they contain miscellaneous clutter, so it just depends on the type of cupboard. So here we have, looks like a knife drawer, um, or a utensil drawer. We have a lot, we cutting boards, vegetable peelers, a lot of miscellaneous stuff. And again, we saw in that crafting menu that we can use a chef knife or a butcher knife, and I think maybe a carving knife for a knife spear. So we will take all of those knives, uh, in this cupboard again appears to be a utensil is that the same drawer it's not also appears to be utensils if we head down here this cupboard is a junk drawer junk drawers um pretty great honestly in the early game for a couple reasons number one they contain basic tools so like here we have a hammer we can pick up candles can be used as a light source i almost never use them fire starting material always good we only have our one matchbook so picking up a second is pretty great Exacto knives are very valuable for later in the game when we start dissecting corpses. So we'll take that. And then mostly when I find a junk drawer, I want these two items. Duct tape is very good for crafting and long strings are very good for cordage for crafting. Like when we made our uh, spike on a stick, we needed strings and we had to tear apart our base to get them. 
here's a drawer which is four strings in them so that's pretty handy over here we have a pot uh, we will take one pot although it's cast iron so it's quite big and heavy checking the fridge we see pretty basic fridge stuff uh, eggs pretty much in every fridge across America lots of dairy products which don't do us any good you'll see they're colored red we never did talk about color coding food items um, blue means that this item has a shelf life and will go bad white items or gray items mean that they do not have a shelf life and are good indefinitely and then red items are items that conflict with one of your uh, traits so all these items that are red contain a lactose uh, a milk product so we can't eat them safely as a lactose intolerant person we'll take the eggs although i don't often eat eggs in the game we'll take i don't really want the lunch meat i don't really need the condiments we'll take mustard because it lasts forever we'll take the orange soda and we'll take the pickled veggies now even though this jar is blue uh which means it has a shelf life because it's pickled in a in a jar is a screw top lid it will last for is perishable food looks fine i believe cooking and skilled or survival you might be able to make a better estimation what does that mean what does that have to do with anything anyway um we're gonna take this you know what we'll probably just eat it but um jars and sealed goods generally don't have a shelf life until you open them so i'm surprised that this pickled veggies jar has a shelf life of four weeks but we will uh, we'll probably just eat them in a day or two. We'll also take the beer here. Again, beer can be used. One, it puts you in a good mood. And two, it can help you with pain killing. So if you're in a lot of pain, a little bit of alcohol will help with that. So we will take the alcohol as well. Ketchup is mostly used in crafting. Lunch meat mostly doesn't... It has 180 calories. Why? It used to be less than that. Maybe I'm thinking of bologna. We'll take that, I guess. Mayonnaise also used in crafting, but mayonnaise goes bad, and I often don't use it, so it'll end up going bad in our base. So that's one of those things you just learn over time, which are the most valuable to take, which are not. Here we have, looks like dry goods in a pantry. Um, so we have breads, which uh, last about a week. We have some cereal, some jam, which uh, again is in a sealed jar, so it has no shelf life, but as soon as we open it, it will start to spoil. And there's no way we're going to go through 96 portions of jam in a week. So it's eventually going to spoil. But we'll take it with us. We'll take the bread too, I guess. So we can make a lunch meat sandwich. So we've cleared out the kitchen. We've gotten most of the things that are valuable. I mentioned long strings. When we broke the windows, we actually destroyed the curtains. Which means in this tile, there's also a long string for each curtain that we've knocked down. So we'll go ahead and collect those as well for crafting. We could take the chemicals with us, which are not super valuable, but having a gallon jug can be pretty handy for transporting water and the like. I know we have some back at base, so I'm not super concerned about that. And our inventory is so full that we can't pick this up. You'll see our volume goes over. So we're going to have to make a trip back to base. Thankfully, we are actually close to base, so it's not hard to, uh, to make a quick trip. Next, we'll move up here and check the books. We have batter up and radio car box. Radio car box is a box that contains a small remote control car. Not super relevant. There's value in it. It has batteries in it. Um, so we will probably disassemble that. And we have the batter up book. Now, when you find a book, you're not going to know what it has unless you've memorized them. Batter up, I believe, increases your blunt weapons. So we will take that. You won't know until you read it precisely what it does. Here we have Birdhouse Monthly. This raises our fabrication. We'll take that as well. We have a children's book. A children's book, and you'll see it has the parentheses after it. This is just a morale book. There's no recipes in this book. It doesn't raise your skills. It's what we call a novel. Um, or, 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 I mean, we generally refer to them as novels because that's what most books of this type are. But they're really just for enjoyment. So we really don't want that. And then we have a paramedics book, which is an, a magazine for EMTs. So we'll take that because that can raise our fab, I believe, to or our uh, first aid, I believe, to one. So our inventory is quite full. Um, let's just head back to base and drop our stuff off. Now, if we look at our storage or our at menu, you'll see we're currently at 39 encumbrance. This is because we picked up so much stuff that our sling has expanded to its full encumbrance. You'll see it's currently 18. 
which is uh, weird. I'm not sure why it actually went over the 15 cap, but you'll see its current encumbrance is 18. And when we go back to base and drop stuff, that will be reduced again. So we're going to come back to base and pop in base here. And we're just going to drop everything we picked up. Again, we can press tab to, to select an entire category rather than individual items. And it will automatically skip the items that are favorited. So we can quickly drop things that we don't need. And we dropped everything out of our inventory. You'll see we're back down to 1.3 liters. And if we look at our sling now you'll see its encumbrance is only five so it gained 13 encumbrance just from having stuff in it so we're going to head back up here and continue looting the house pretty common that you will have to make multiple trips uh, i think we'll take this time to pick up the ammonia while we have space for it we will also take apart this radio box kit disassemble and it will drop that stuff on the ground and we're going to take why in god's name would it come with uncharged batteries Okay, we're going to take them anyway because we can recharge them later. In fact, I don't really care about ultralight batteries, so we're just going to leave that behind. Um, but yeah, so we've cleared out the main foyer area, the kitchen, the living area. We're going to head back here. There are some locked cabinets or cupboards. Uh, you'll see because our hammer has a prying quality, it is trying to pry this door. The problem is it's not a good enough pry tool to pry the door. So instead, we're going to have to use our lock picks. And this time, we don't have the luxury of going around. So we're going to have to just do this until we get a successful thing here, which can take many, many attempts at low skill level. No, don't apply bandages. Apply the lock pick. Pretty frustrating, frankly, to have to do this. Nope. Um, and there's really no way to circumvent this. There is... We could potentially just smash the door down, which is what we're going to do if we continue failing. But remember that doing this... Ah, oh, we got it. Remember that doing this is leveling our mechanics. You'll see we're 21% of the way to mechanics 1. And it was just a linen closet. So we'll take the soap and the string. And we'll check the bathroom. We have a soap bar, three toothbrushes, and a shaving razor, which we'll take the soap. We'll check the bathtub. A bathtub is another container like the cabinets that don't reveal their items until you step up to them. There are sometimes things in the bathtub, so remember to step close so you can see inside the bathtub. Head into the old bedroom, check the dresser. Dressers are an excellent place to find clean clothing um, because the clothing you find on zombies is usually damaged and uh, filthy, which requires a few extra steps to get them get them cleaned up and wet and repaired enough to wear so dressers are an excellent place to find basic clothing many times uh, i think they overdid the spawns a little bit a lot of them contain the thermal electric suit this is a special form of undergarment it's like a onesie that you wear under your clothes that can be used you can turn it on or off uh, and it will heat up your body so if you're in the particular cold you can put a battery in it turn it on and it will warm you up even more than its basic warmth so just wearing it turned off will give us 10 warmth. And then if we turn it on, uh, we would have to turn it on to see what the actual warmth is while it's on because it transforms the item. It turns it into a different item for the purposes of, of having it being powered. So we don't know what exactly it is, but it's a pretty good item to have. It's way less valuable nowadays, but I still think they went overboard because how many people actually own, own a onesie that can be activated with batteries to get hot? Um, so we'll check the closet here as well. Faux fur trench coat. This is an item worth talking about. We talked about clothing in our previous episode. Uh, and we talked about how cotton is the lowest tier item. Uh, so it's usually like cotton. Then you have fur and wool. And then you have leather are the basic clothing items that you're going to find the most. And uh, they, they're in order of most valuable. So cotton being the least valuable for protection and leather being the most valuable for protection. Fur is pretty up there as well. Fur is comparable to leather items. And so you'll see this trench coat has nine encumbrance because it fits us, which is pretty low. It covers our torso and our arms. It has five bash and cut, which is better than the stuff we're currently wearing. And it has a whopping six extra liters because it has all these pockets that we can, we can store way more stuff. By comparison, in fact, let's pick this up. We haven't talked about this yet. 
You can compare an item side by side by holding shift and pressing the I key. So capital I, and it will ask you to select two items to compare. So let's compare our current winter jacket, our winter coat, and we'll select the other item as our fur trench coat. And what this does is put these two items side by side so that you can make a quick comparison of the two items. So our current coat has protection of four and four. The fur coat has five and five. You'll see the numbers are also color coded. The red is worse than the green. So it's more protection. It's way less encumbrance. It's 11 less encumbrance, which again, is 11% more likely to mess up our melee attack. It covers slightly less of our body, which is weird because it's a trench coat. Uh, it's considerably less warm, so we would be able to deal with some of our temperature issues because this is way, way hotter. It has double the storage, which is very valuable to us at the moment because we don't have a lot of storage. And everything else I don't really care about. It weighs a little bit more. It's not a big deal. Uh, the leaders don't matter when you're wearing something. The 90% coverage is a marginal difference. 5% less likely to protect us from damage is not a big deal. They occupy the same leather. There are some other benefits uh, down here. Um, you'll see the winter coat has a wide collar, which means that if we're um, not wearing something else on our mouth, it will protect our mouth from... It will, it will contribute warmth to our mouth. Um, and it has a hood as well, which does the same thing for our head, which is why our head is not cold. If we did not have a hood, we're not currently wearing any hats or anything, our head would be cold. So by switching to the trench coat, we're getting more protection, considerably more volume, uh, storage, less encumbrance, which is very good. But doing this will probably make our head cold. We are wearing a scarf, so the mouth isn't a big deal. Um, but the head, our head will probably become cold, but, um, oh, or probably not because it's like day 61. So it's not a big deal. So I think transferring to the trench coat is much more beneficial than continuing to wear the winter coat just because we're hot. So if we look at our temperature, we're at 40 torso warmth. We take off the winter coat and yes, we can just drop it because we don't have room in our inventory and we wear the fur trench coat and we go back, you'll see our warmth is actually 21, which is much better. And you'll see our mouth, our head is now getting a little cold. We're at negative nine. It's not to the point where we need to be concerned, but it will get there during some of the nighttime hours. Uh, we'll probably be a little too cold, but we can deal with that later. This will address a lot of our warmth that we're experiencing on our torso and arms. What it won't fix is our feet. That's currently, we're also wearing um, winter boots which are very very hot we're going to want to swap those out as well in the near future but so we switch to a trench coat which is good and that's an excellent way of comparing directly item to item is to use that capital i menu i mostly don't because i know enough about the game that it's not super relevant i, I usually know one is better than the other but there are often tough calls and you just need to either learn or you need to use the capital i menu so we've secured a better coat which is great um, and in this particular tile set, it actually changes my appearance. You'll see that purple pink garment we're wearing is our, is our trench coat. Uh, hostile detected. Yeah, ignore that. So you'll see we dropped the uh, purple trench coat. I'm not sure why fur is, is uh, pink, but whatever. It's not a big deal. We'll search the other bedroom. Nothing really of value. Sometimes I'll collect undershirts and t-shirts just to have backups, but... They're so, they're so insignificant that it's almost never really worth it to pick them up. Uh, we'll check the closet. There's nothing in here. Again, we have blankets and pillows, which we could take back to base um, and throw on our bed because we don't really have a proper blanket. Uh, and that's really, well, it's not it for the house. We have a garage here. Oh, and a basement, which is very, very good. Basements are extremely valuable in the game. Um, many of them... Most of the ones you're going to come across are going to be really basic, but there are some really good ones. Uh, we're in the laundry area, so we'll take more soap. Soap is used for cleaning clothing items, by the way. I never mentioned that. Um, so it will let you take items from zombies and uh, clean them for, for wear. And it looks like we have two exterior f uh, freezers or refrigerators here. They're, they're fridges. They're not freezers. Glass door fridge, glass door fridge. 
quite a lot more food in them. Uh, we're going to need to make, uh, you'll see our, our volume expanded considerably. We're up to 23 now that we can carry. We're going to take a lot of this. Um, again, we're not going to take the lactose intolerant stuff. We just secured five bottles of clean water. That's another two or three days of beverages that we didn't have before. French fries, fruit jam. Uh, don't really want the condiments as we discussed before. A lemon is a conundrum. There are occasional foods in the game that give you calories but make you unhappy. And lemons are one of them. And I just don't really see the point in eating it when it's only 18 calories. And it's just going to make me sad. Who wants to eat a lemon? I actually love lemons. Um, we will take the lettuce. Again, we'll take the lunch meat. We'll take the mustard because it never goes bad. And then we'll take the other fruit as well because it does give calories quench and we enjoy eating them so we'll take all of them and we're filled up to the brim so we'll head back to base and once again drop our stuff off again can you imagine doing this let's say we were at the hardware store and we were trying to pick things up we would have to make three or four trips to pick up everything and we would have to walk that whole distance over and over and over um, and there are ways around that and we'll talk about that when we get there but um, it is annoying, uh, so it's nice to be able to be this close to our base and just quickly step back, drop everything. I saw something out this window. What's going on out here? Now I know I saw something. Hmm. Oh, he's right there. Yeah, it's a raccoon. Um, we could, again, kill a raccoon for meat. I don't think we need to do that right now, so we're not going to do that. We're going to head back, finish clearing this house real quick, and probably call the episode once we've cleared that. We'll probably clear the basement in the next episode. So we were in the process of picking things up, so we'll pick up everything that we want. No condiments. We'll take the mustard. We'll take the OJ. Take the pickles and pickled veggies. We're going to need to eat them quickly because they're going to go bad. Is that everything? We'll take the strawberries and raspberries. I'm not sure how I missed them. Take the soy sauce as well as the pickles. Did I just not scroll down? I must not have scrolled down. There must have been more items than I thought there were because I see no reason why I wouldn't have taken some of this stuff. Then we'll pop in the garage real quick. Obviously, it's weird that you have two basement stairs. Obviously, garage, you know, these houses are based, uh, their loot is based on the location in the house. In the bookcases, in the living room, we found books. In the kitchen, we found food. Bathroom has medicine and soap and things like that bedrooms are clothing washing areas clothing fridges are food the garage is where you come when you're looking for tools and i see two pretty valuable tools number one i see a screwdriver which we had manufactured ourselves and is less valuable than it used to be but we'll take it detergent is fine then we found a wrench wrenches extremely important they're very difficult you can't make anything that functions as a wrench in the early game it's something you really need to find in the world in order to do basically any kind of vehicle work you need to have a wrench so a wrench is very good and then we found a jack which i guess we'll take it um jacks are required for changing tires uh but they're you can make them they're not super super something that you need every moment of every day uh the wrench is by far the more valuable tool I'm going to go back to base and drop things off, even though we didn't check the basement yet. We're going to head back. I think we'll check the basement in the next episode. And we'll talk a little bit about what basements can contain because they can be extremely valuable. So the other benefit of getting the screwdriver, by the way, if we search for screwdriver. Oh, never mind. They're identical. Ignore me. Uh, so we'll head back. In the next episode, we're going to check this basement. We're going to talk about basements and why you should always, always check basements and... Uh, upstairs whenever you come across a building that has them and uh yeah that's gonna do it for this episode we looted our first house hopefully you have understood a little bit of where to go to find certain things and what is a priority and what is not um we'll continue talking about loot priority as we find new items but really again just like the difficulty with monsters and things it's really something that you just learn over time if you're a new player and you see a wrench you might not understand that that is uh, literally something that if you can't find one will stop you from having a vehicle later in the game. Very important that you find a wrench. 
Uh, and so you might walk right by that and not really pick it up. So my advice to you as a new player would be to pick up basically everything and learn what is valuable and what is not. Tools in particular are very frequently valuable and I would encourage you to pick up basically every tool that you come across, even picking up duplicates if you find them. So um, the primary ones are screw driving, hammers, uh, jacks, wrenches, hack saws, and then wood saws are less important, but occasionally useful. And then there's a ton more tools, but their value is a little less than the ones I just mentioned. The wrench, the hacksaw, screwdriver, and hammer are the ones that I use the most. Also, if you see a soldering iron, for the love of God, pick it up because you're going to need it. And oftentimes I forget to pick them up and then hate myself for it later. So uh, we'll talk about loot priorities more as we continue with the game. For now, that's going to do it. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, maybe like, comment, and subscribe. And I, of course, will be back with more Cataclysm content in the near future. See you next time.